Yes, my name is David. Um, here to discuss a uh, paper been working on around monetary policy, transmission channel, a case study of banking industry in Kenya. Uh, I think I'll take a different view. I'll use, I'll present this paper in a layman's language as much as possible. What this paper is trying to look at is, um, I'm trying to look at the evolution in the monetary policy. That is how the monetary policy has been evolving over time. And how commercial banks have been responding to the changes of the evolution in the monetary policy. And by looking at how commercial banks have been responding, um, looking at the risk-taking behavior of the commercial banks. So in a nutshell, what this paper is looking at is, is being motivated by the current tightening in the policy rate. And we are looking at how does this tightening in the policy rate affect the way banks respond in their lending behavior. And in doing so, the paper goes ahead and looks at does the commercial banks only um, react to the policy pronouncement? And if they do so, how do they leverage on their equity side and their liability side of their balance sheet? so that they either affect the constraint which is caused by a policy tightening. So ideally is, there's a policy tightening, so how do the banks behave in terms of continuing their leading behavior? And that behavior, how is it reflected on the equity side of the commercial bank and the liability side? So, um, it has been argued here uh, that the global financial crisis of 2007-2008 was as a result of excessive commercial banks risk-taking behavior in the periods of low policy rates. And therefore, since then the monetary economists or the macroeconomists as well, they have been uh, much a lot debate about how changes in the monetary policy is affecting uh, the risk-taking behavior by the banking industry and to a larger extent, the health of the financial sector at lunch. And therefore, there's a lot of growing literature. And in this literature, it's very clear uh, that the relationship between uh, short-term interest rates, uh, where CBR lies, and what we may call the bank risk behavior is negative. That is, if there's a policy tightening, what it will mean is that the commercial banks will respond by tightening their credit standards and therefore, they are likely to lend less. But the question is, uh, this relationship, is it always guaranteed? And if it is guaranteed, for how long does it um, uh, last? So the scenario at hand here is, if you look at what happened after COVID, the economies globally were globbering in the issue of slowed economic growth. And therefore, the central banks opted to do what you call the quantitative easing, so that you can spur uh, private sector credit. But on the other side of the government, the government were doing what you may call the physical expansionary fiscal policy or fiscal stimulus programs. And nobody had an issue by then, because globally the economies were trying to spur economic growth post-COVID. But then this was fueling inflation slowly by slowly. Then came, uh, as you can see, is that um, around 2020, IMF is actually uh, noting that uh, 27 central banks, 10 of them being African, eight being uh, Latin American, and nine being Asian, actually they resorted to what we may call the APP, that is the government assets purchase programs, in a way of trying to spur up the economic growth. But then, when COVID ended, or towards the, uh, 2021, there was an issue now with geopolitical environment and the shocks in the supply side. And the inflation which was being created by quantitative easing and expansionary fiscal stimulus program was actually now more evident. And therefore, banks ended up, uh, uh, central banks ended up resulting into what you may call uh, tightening of the policy rate. But now, if you look at some few months ago, it's like anchoring of inflation globally was actually being achieved by the, commercial, by the central banks. 
But then we have some developing risks, one of them being, of course, the surge in the oil prices. And of course, you've had the issue of now Russia pronouncing that it will not be selling diesel to countries which are outside the BRICS. Then there's the issue of still the geopolitical shocks because of, again, the war on, uh, in Ukraine and Russia and other developments in the um, Middle East. And then also there's the issue of the increasing burden. So the question is, we thought that the central banks had already managed to anchor the inflation at the moment. But you have these crises which are coming up or new developments. So the question is, what is the way forward for the monetary policy? And that is the question that we are seeking to achieve here. But very quickly, I'll say that um, what is motivating this study with the stylist fact is that, one, we are seeing that when you have monetary policy developments, especially on the, uh, the expansion of monetary policy, what will happen is that um, an accommodative monetary policy may result to banks growing their balance sheet, of course, by lending more with collateralized borrowing. And therefore, in this case, the banks are trying to manage their leverage levels. But then, when you look at the transmission channel, whenever you have a monetary policy pronouncement, when you look at the transmission channel, there are two positive effects here we can look at. One is that a high policy rate will lead to higher lending rate, of course, through tightening of the credit standards. But then, the second one is what we may call the classical risk shifting effect, which is associated with the higher cost of liability. And this classical shifting effect is actually what this study is going to look at. And I'll be explaining shortly the reason as to why. So in the stylist facts here, I've already mentioned the first one. We expect a negative relationship between the policy, the, in, the short term interest rate and the risk taking behavior. But secondly, when you look at the channels of monetary policy transmission, here we can identify two which are largely discussed in the literature. And one is what we may call the bank lending channel, which is proposed by Bananke. The bank, risk, uh, the bank channel, lending channel is very simple, is that you tighten the monetary policy, that will have an effect on the banking, bank reserves, and that reduces the deposits. And at the end of the day, it leads to reduction in the lending. And then you have the second one, which is the risk-taking channel, which is more of an indirect. And how this works is that you tighten the rate, then it makes the risky assets less attractive. And therefore, you reduce collaterals, you reduce the values of the collateral of the assets which are being used by the borrower. So, but what we can see is that another fact is that whenever a bank is faced with, a uh, banking industry is faced with a tightening of policy rate, is that equity tends to be cheaper as compared to borrowed funds, if you are looking at the two in making the decision for lending. Very quickly, you look at how the monetary policy has evolved in the country, and you can see in this graph, uh, what happens is that the first spike, of course, happened um, when we were in the sharing reaching over 100 mark. So, and then you can see that is managed, but the focus of this study is at the period I've mentioned, that is in 2020, you can see during the COVID time, there was a post, uh, that rate uh, was actually at a fairly stable and remained unchanged for a while. But then post-COVID, you can see the spike happening. And today, I think we are under 10.5%. Uh, so the research problem here, I'll not dwell much on this, but the research problem is what I've been mentioning. Here we have two channels. One is the bank lending channel. And what you're saying that this channel is a more of a direct channel. Because you tighten the policy rate, it affects the reserves, it affects the deposits, the lending goes down. But the risk taking channel, it is more of an implicit channel because it comes through the assets and the collateral value. And then it has an effect, effect on the equity, the bank equity side and the liability side. So, we are asking ourselves, what happens when the policy rate changes in the event of um, the bank risk-taking behavior or the risk appetite? And how is this appetite influenced by two things? One is the bank equity, which we are measuring by tier one ratio. And secondly, is what we may call the bank liability side, which is the non-interest bearing deposits. So. Quickly, those are the two objectives. 
So one, we try to look at the effect of the policy tightening on the bank risk behavior through the bank equity side. And then the second one is to determine the effect of the policy tightening on the bank risk taking behavior uh, through the non-bank interest, uh, the non-interest bearing deposits. And on the methodology, I don't dwell much on this using panel data. And here we are copying a, mo uh, a model called panel uh, factor to re regressive model, so I'll not dwell much on that. Um, but what is happening here is that I move to this slide here. So on the bank risk, we are using two measures. One is the loss on loan provisions, uh, which is the LLP. And we are also using the Z score, which is, of course, computed from a return on assets of a bank uh, together with the uh, ratio of equity to assets. And then tier one ratio, uh, which is the core capital as a proportion of the total risk weight and assets, is actually now the measure of the equity side of the bank's balance sheet. Then we have the bank's uh, balance sheet on the side of the liability. We are using the non-interest uh, bearing deposits. Then monetary policy, or the policy rate here, we are using the CBR. Then we control for what you call the deposits over the total. That is the DEP ratio, because you know the deposit mobilization has an effect on the ability of the bank to lend. And the bank size, which is also a control variable, because you expect the size of the bank, the, the way the bank's uh, risk-taking behavior of the banks to be affected by the bank, side, uh, the bank size. So quickly, if you look at this model, therefore we are modeling the bank risk behavior as a function of the policy. Then we include tier one, which is tier one ratio, which is capturing the um, equity side of the bank balance sheet. Then you have the non-deposit, uh, the non-interest bearing deposits. And then we also interact the two measures which are from the bank equity side and the bank liability side, you interact them with the policy rate. And then the X there stands for the DEP uh, ratio and also the, the DEP ratio and um, the bank size. So uh, why, why are we controlling for uh, these two control variables and not any other? One, we know of course the size of the bank which is measured by the bank assets the larger banks would be less responsive to a monetary policy stance. Although the question which was asked even in the morning hours is for how long? Because there's a threshold. Assuming that you have sustained successive monetary policy revision, upwards revision, the question is for how long can a commercial bank, even the big commercial banks, be able to leverage on their equity side or liability side to be less responsive to monetary policy tightening and continue lending? So, um, the reason we are having the DEP, that is the, uh, the deposit, uh, the ratio of the deposits of uh, the total liability, it is informed by the thinking that the banks with large amount of deposit will adjust their deposit rate uh, by less or less quickly than the banks with, uh, whose liability are more composed of variable rate bonds that are directly affected by market movements. And the second one I've already mentioned about the issue of the bank size and also this, this notion of too big to fail so that you don't have a large commercial bank being aggressive in risk taking but then that is weighing down on its uh, stability. So very fast as I try to wind up, uh, these are the results uh, of the estimation and on these results the first model is the Z-score model, then the second one is the loss or loan provision model. So the first model, if we measure bank risk taking behavior using a Z-score model, what we can find that if you look at the CBR, uh, the sign there is negative. And what it tells you is that when you tighten the policy, it has a negative effect on the risk. That's what it implies that whenever there is a policy tightening, then the banks are risk averse. That is the first effect it has, the CBR. Uh, but then, when you look at the equity side, that is the tier one ratio, the same is mimicked. That is the equity side of the bank. Uh, whenever the, it has a negative sign, or there's a reduction in the, in the risk-taking behavior. But look at what happens to the liability side. That is an interest bearing deposits. Um, you can see it as a positive effect. 
that is, it means that the banks are le would leverage on the non-interest bearing deposits to be to have more risk appetite or to take more risk. But now, when you integrate all, um, you integrate CBR, that's the policy rate, with tier one ratio, which is the equity side of the bank and the liability side, you can see the positive effect it has. So in short, what it is is that if you interact the policy rate with the measure on bank equity and bank liability side, you can see they are increasing those interventions, those, those interactions, they have a positive effect on the risk appetite, which means actually uh, banks, whenever you are faced with a policy tightening, a bank would actually leverage on the equity side, their equity side, or liability side, to be able to afford the constraint which is caused by that policy tightening. And the same results are mimicked on the second side, that second model, if you are measuring uh, risk-taking behavior by loss on loan provisions. So what are we drawing from this? So as you can see, these I've already explained, uh, that you can see that, first of all, the element of the risk behavior, that is the monetary policy transmission risk-taking behavior, on the, uh, the, what, what you may call the risk-shifting-taking behavior, is actually eminent in the Kenyan context. But uh, the banks actually would leverage on their equity side and also their liability side to trade off uh, the effect or the containing effect of the policy tightening. So on conclusion, and the policy implication would be one, of course it is evident that the risk taking, uh, that is the monetary policy uh, transmission, risk taking, uh, risk taking, uh, uh, the, uh, the, the risk-taking monetary uh, policy transmission channel is evident in the Kenyan context. But then, as you interpret these results, you need to be very careful because the implication here is that in the first scenario, we are seeing that um, the equity side has a negative effect on the risk-taking behavior, but the liability side it has a positive effect on the risk-taking behavior. So what it implies is that during the policy tightening, then perhaps the bank would be more vulnerable to use equity funded, or equity is more cheaper, as you mentioned in the studies fact, as opposed to um, borrowed funds. So in this case, the implication here is that uh, it has, we could imply something around the issue of the capital structure of a commercial bank, that the banks would strive to be more equity funded as opposed to um, being uh, 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 um, debt funded uh, if, if the issue of trying to afford the constraints caused by the uh, monetary policy tightening is something to go by. And secondly is the liability side. You are seeing the issue of the non-interest bearing deposits. The banks are actually leveraging on the non-interest bearing deposits to be able to lend or to uptake more risk even in the event of policy tightening. So again, this talk to the issue about the issue of the bank leveraging on the uh, being, um, uh, 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 there's the need for banks to be more proactive in uh, deposit mobilization. But then there's something that comes up clearly um, that there's need for in-house models, and this was mentioned before, because the question is, in as much as the bank can leverage on the equity side or the liability side to continue taking more risk or continue lending in the event of policy tightening, the question is for how long? And this is all about the issue of what is may spur, what you may call innovations, because the idea here is that, and as Tiriongo mentioned, it is not necessary that whenever there's a policy tightening, the bank will uh, the banks will respond uniformly and uh, within a shorter period of time because what it happens is that there is a change in the policy that will first of all affect the short term interests which is then refilled uh, to the end consumer through the interest rate but the question is that is it always that whenever there is a policy tightening the banks will respond by increasing the cost of funds or the interest rate on the existing loans and the answer would be no because sometimes the increment could be so minimal to warrant, if you look at the cost of effecting that change on the existing loans, one could be, you could actually effect the change 
and then you convert a performing loan to be an unperforming loan. Secondly, there is that lack that whenever you have a policy tightening, there is a period that commercial banks are normally given to communicate to the customers. And therefore, you expect that lag to be there. So that's why we are talking about the issue of the bullet number three. They need to have in-house models by commercial banks so that in as much as you are leveraging on the equity levels or liability levels to continue taking more risk or lending in the period of policy tightening, you need to have those in-house models whereby you are able to project for how long can you take this um, risk-taking uh, behavior in the interest of Okay, based on the progression in the policy tightening. That way, it will have two effects. One, you'll be able to afford what you may call um, unhealthy balance sheet in terms of uh, or unhealthy uh, financial uh, status, uh, which could have a negative bearing on, st on your stability. And then the last one is about the issue of the financial sector stability, which was again mentioned by Jared. And here we are mentioning about the issue of need for a robust uh, bank level stress testing because if you're going to have progressive uh, monetary policy tightening and banks continue leveraging on their equity side or liability side to afford the constraint which is caused by the policy tightening, the question is how sure are we about the, uh, the, the aspect of financial stability at the bank level? So there's need to have that robustness and this one could be informed by especially where you have in this case I'm proposing where you have successive policy tightening for a longer period of time because the fact is that uh, the longer the tightening continues um, and assuming the banks continue uh, utilizing their equity levels and the liability side uh, to lend more then it has a threshold but the question is uh, what would be that threshold? But that threshold could be informed if uh, individual banks would have in-house models, which are the point I'm capturing in point three. And I think I'll end my discussion at that point. Thank you.